Hi, welcome back. In this series of sessions, we are looking at ETL concepts in data sphere. In my previous session, I've gone through remote table object and replication flow objects creation in the system. In today's session, we're going to focus on transformation flow. It's another object. This is used to apply complex transformation or simple or complex transformation in uh, data sphere on top of replication flow target objects like DB tables. You can call them local tables as well. Let's switch to the data sphere system and then start creating a transformation flow. So I'm in replication flows. I, I can have my trans transformation flow in the same folder, that's fine. I can either create a transformation flow from plus icon or I can do it from um, the top window here. So I'm gonna choose it from the plus window. This is a new transformation flow window. You can see a target and a view transform. A view transform is, is mandatory for a transformation flow. What is a view transform? Uh, it, it contains the co logic um, of um, your transformation. For example, you can build your transformation logic using graphical view or SQL. So if you select graphical view, it, it invokes a graphical user interface to apply your transformations on your data sphere local tables. Let's start with the graphical view. Then we're going to switch on uh, graphical view transform and then create a graphical view transform. And automatically that comes and uh, attached to this view transform. So if I wanted to create another um, one, like a SQL transform, I, I choose SQL transform. Let's start with the graphical transform. When I click on that graphical transform, I get to the graphical view editor and the default node is enabled here. I'm going to select uh, a table or a few tables here and then apply joins and et cetera, which is um, uh, my objective of this uh, session is not to show complex transformation. I just wanted to show you how to start with or how to start creating a new transformation flow object in data sphere. So for that, I'm not really picking an, uh, a data logic here. I'm just going to get uh, sorry, I don't have a remote table uh, to I cannot use the remote table to be here. I can, I have a couple of local tables created uh, as part of replication flow before. So I'm going to select a uh, carrier table and put it into the view transform. As soon as I drag into the canvas, I or graphical view editor, I see um, the table definition coming here. There are five columns in it and those five columns are available in the default node as well. I can add more nodes to this one. I can uh, have a joint suggestion or I can bring in another table called airport and then just drag on top of this. So it's going to show you a, a, a join proposal. So you can see all oh, union on replace proposal. So if I wanted to have a join, put it on join. So it's going to get me to the join uh, option on top of the carrier. So I don't really need this join. I'm not, as I said before, I've, my use case for graphical view editor is not to show a complex transformation on what it can do and, and cannot, but it is just to simplify or simply show the functionality of how the transformation flow is created. And at the same time, I'm showing you some capabilities like projection. You can add more columns or have, remove some columns or create calculated columns. You can open it and go to the FX will give you a calculated columns and I do some aggregations and get the data preview and as well as filter. Uh, you, you have several options in each node that you can apply in graphical transfer, transformation. Uh, if you don't have any operator or any functionality that is in graphical view editor, that's when you switch to the SQL transformation uh, editor or SQL view editor and then make your SQL code uh, either using graph, uh, transaction SQL or table function SQL and then run it um, and replace it with graphical view. Right now I'm going to show you what is graphical view is doing. I'm fine with it. All details are good and I'm going to uh, go back uh, from here. As soon as I click go back, it, in, it attaches uh, the previously created graphical view into the view transform. Um, you can see still I get the modify option to change it, or I can also do the SQL transform 
logic if in case if i don't uh, i don't like it and you can also do the data preview here data viewer as well so my target uh, is going to be another table as i shown in my screen uh, another db table or local table that i'm going to uh, have it applied here it's a, it's a kind of an error message it's just since it doesn't have a table attached i'm going to attach a table so i attached a table uh, target one i can go and give the table name uh, as um, if this is a result of carrier um, i can say carrier target as car target and that's uh, going to be i can truncate and load all the time just on delta capture i'm not doing any delta captures at this time i'm fine with it closing the details and saving it and then this is going to be my transformation flow i'm going to save it in same place as replication flow oops i'm going to say tf on as as card table save it and then deploy and then run will run will make sure your data will transformed and loaded into the target team okay and then i can deploy it and then run it after at the same time i'm going to create another one uh, which is using sql transformation so i'm in the same folder i'm going to say create another transformation flow and then here view transform i select it and sql so it's going to take me to another um, place where SQL editor is coming. I can simply do a SQL code. Like if I wanted to do, I can do the um, table function with a complex logic, or I can have a simple SQL. Uh, oh, sorry, I don't have the data flows. I will be going into replication flows and then get a table uh, name which is going to be as airport into this one um, that's it and then I'm going to go back and then apply uh, the transformation is applied in the target I can say add and then give the target name as um, as fly Um, target and I can truncate and load it and then save it. This is how I can apply a SQL transform. I, if I have a complex uh, procedural or complex logic, uh, then I can use table function, but at this time I don't need a table function. So I don't need a table function in the in this uh, in this example. I used simple SQL using SQL, TF with SQL, and then save it. So when I run it and deploy it and run it, it will load the data from S flight into the data target uh, as it deployed into the data targets of data sphere. This is going to be uh, having data flow, oh, sorry, data transformation using transformation flow and deploying it, and it's going to run for deployment. I wanted to show you another aspect of this whole ETL concept in the and that is the last one, task chain. So here it is, how this is, it's like a process chain or process uh, sequence, you can call it as. You can see the extract load transform and outbound, the source systems being on the very left, you got SAP data sphere, uh, which is allowing you to replication flow uh, to get the data into the local table. And then a transformation flow apply using SQL field based, or custom logic. Uh, with these uh, options, you can create a uh, SQL. So the, the field base is graphical and custom is, is still more to come because as I said, um, there are some limitations in using uh, the custom logics. And when, when you get the Python uh, libraries allowed and embedded in, uh, in transformation flows, then that's when this object becomes so much and sophisticated or powerful addressing all the use cases. 
But for now, SQL and field-based geographical transformation flow, and then store the data into another local table. And then you can decide or have an optional replication flow to send the data out, outbound targets like GCP, Azure, uh, and uh, S3 bucket, Amazon, AWS, S3 bucket, uh, and etc. This is a, uh, I, I can create a task chain. I can show you how to create a task chain, but it's not very important. It's not that I wanted to cover in a different session. I can end that topic in the same session so that it can be a complete uh, ETL closure. So let's say I can go and plus and then see tasks chain. So this task chain allows me to add uh, on my, so we're in the uh, user interface of task chain and I can drag and drop, or I can actually say when your placeholder will be a, a sequential one or a parallel one. Let's start with the one that we have created, re real uh, replication flow uh, to outbound, so it's, sorry, to inbound. Drag this and drop it on this task here. So when I had this task and uh, added here, so now I get an option. Um, the next task can be a parallel uh, placeholder or parallel branch uh, after selected task. So I'm going to put this um, in the, let's say, in the, let's say, uh, as a parallel branch uh, or sequence branch. Let me add a, a transformation for a car and just going to drive it here. It is going to uh, give me an option to choose uh, as a parallel or as a new task and replace. By default, it's going to add as a new task. I'm going to leave it as it. So similarly, I can add more tasks and save it and then deploy it and run it, this task chain. It is going to run for all the tasks. I can even nest the task, task chain. I mean, I can use another task chain in it and then um, and then call uh, run this one so that it gets, it's like a nested process chain or nested um, uh, nested thing. So it's it's done. Now uh, I can create more complex task chains as well, but my objective is to show you uh, how does the task chain um, work in order to take the replication flows from source to target, and then a sequence uh, transformation flow that takes the uh, data from local table to target table. I don't have another replication flow that I, I do have uh, another replication flow for outbound. I can add it, but that is not the, uh, but that's not going to help because that has a uh, problem because outbound, my outbound replication flow didn't work because of the reason that it, it, it was having some issues in the, can uh, access controls, but yeah, still I can add it. So with that, data inbound, transformation, and outbound. Uh, task chain can be a full set of tasks together. We'll make uh, a complete data flow or ETL flow in in, in data sphere. That's all for this uh, ETL concepts in data sphere. Uh, I am wrapping up this uh, session series um, and we will, be looking into more uh, modeling concepts in the next upcoming sessions in data sphere. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.